recorded. Good day and welcome to the WANA webinar series. As you will notice, all participants have been muted. If you have a question to ask, please send your question into the Q&A panel located at the bottom right-hand side of your screen or by pressing the three dot option along the bottom and selecting the Q&A panel. Your questions will be answered after the presentation. If you have any technical issues, please send a private chat to the host, the directions of which you can find in the chat window. Thank you for joining and please welcome Andy Wilson. Good morning, everybody in North America, and uh, good afternoon to those of us from uh, Europe and places farther east. We are here for the WANA webinar series entitled Light in the Dark, Clubhouses Finding Their Way Through COVID, and we are grateful that, that, that you are with us. My name is Andy Wilson. I am the Executive Director of the Carriage House here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in the States. And uh, I am, uh, I've been kicking around clubhouses for about uh, 25 years. I've got, uh, I sit on the, the Clubhouse Advisory Council. I'm, I'm on the faculty and I have a purple beard. So uh, I lost a bet to my children uh, just a couple of days ago. I am, am aware that it looks really silly. I am sorry for, uh, sorry for the distraction. Okay, so I am honored to be your moderator today. Um, so our structure today, what we're going to try to do is, is, is a roundtable. We're going to try to avoid, uh, avoid lengthy presentations and, and rather engage in, in a discussion with a few of our clubhouse leaders from, from around the world. Um, uh, our, our webinar, uh, to, to set the table, the, the, the webinar today springs from a, an email conversation uh, uh, that started a few weeks ago. Uh, my clubhouse shared that uh, after our original 90-day shutdown for COVID, uh, it was in March 18th, we were closed for about 90 days, um, we started to do a gradual reopening that I think a, a lot of us have, have tried to do. Um, and we had uh, started with eight members that uh, could call in and kind of reserve days to, to, to come in and, and be part of their clubhouse. Um, and over a matter of weeks, we increased that to 12, and then we increased it to 15, and, and eventually we increased it to 18, which is kind of the number we thought we could do safely. And we were doing all the stuff, right, the masking and the temperature checking and, and all, that, all that sort of business. After a few weeks of that, um, we weren't getting 18 members signed up anymore. And then, well, our clubhouse, the average daily attendance was about 65 pre-COVID. Pre so we, we said, okay. Anybody can come come in, and we'll just keep real close track of how many people are here. And our numbers continued to go down. Um, and uh, that was troublesome. So we started to do some really heavy thinking about it. And um, it seemed to us that aside from the incredible anxiety around a once-in-a-lifetime pan pandemic, um, we seemed to have a cultural shift. Uh, because of the few members that were here at the clubhouse, we just didn't seem to have as much work to do. We didn't have as much food to make. We didn't have as much banking to do. We didn't have the stuff that has, has driven us. So uh, it seemed that all of us, uh, in place of that, we've been doing some great outreach, but in place of that, we got used to taking care of each other rather than really needing each other. So, of course, in the clubhouse, we say that's a needed, wanted, and expected. But in our clubhouse, contacts seem to start more with how can we help you rather than we really need you. And culturally, that felt like a shift to us. Um, so, uh, in, in great clubhouse fashion, we, we sent an email around, and we're, frankly, we thought, oh, my gosh, we – the Carriage House has totally failed at keeping a vibrant clubhouse culture. I have totally failed as, as clubhouse director. Um, and we were really surprised uh, to, to get lots and lots of responses from all around the world saying, oh, my gosh, that's us too. That's, that's, that's where we are. You, you are not alone. So uh, in talking to Clubhouse International about it, we thought that this might be a good discussion for, for all of us to have question of how has your clubhouse been impacted, not just by COVID, but by uh, a cultural change in the, the, the need and expectation of, of our communities. 
So we are welcomed today by three great clubhouses to help us think about that. We've got Frank and Grace from Potential Place in Calgary in Canada. We've got Kaylee and Monica from Hero House Northwest in Washington State here in the U.S. And we have Corey and Rhonda from Legacy Center in Michigan, also from here in, in, in the U.S. So I would like to welcome our brilliant panelists. And then let's start just by asking each clubhouse to give us a, a, a couple of minutes here just uh, to introduce themselves, share how big their clubhouse was pre-COVID, uh, what their kind of strategy was over the last nine months, and, and where they are now. And we'll use that as kind of our jumping off point to do some more discussing. So without further ado, uh, Frank and Grace, uh, why don't you tell us what's going on up there and at Potential Place? Uh, thanks for the uh, the intro, Andy, and thanks for having the courage to uh, work with Clubos International to uh, put this together. And uh, you know, I think through the strings that we've seen uh, in the email correspondence with our group, at least, and, and you're part of that, uh, uh, you aren't alone. And a lot of us have been going through uh, the same thing. So we're a, a hybrid clubhouse operating um, since June 1st. We pivoted on March 24th to a virtual clubhouse for about 10 weeks. And then we staged our reopening, much like yourself. Uh, we started that in June, 10 members a day, five in the morning, five in the afternoon. We then went to 10 members a day, 20 members a day, 10 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon in July. August, we fully reopened, and then we added social rec back in September. Um, and pre-COVID numbers, our average daily attendance were about 38. Um, and uh, despite the the robust reach out. Um, and um, uh, are, are, are pivoting to a virtual world to include a number of, of platforms. I, I think our attendance today is around 26. So that's a combination of both virtual attendees and physical attendees. So we're down to about 75% of what our numbers were pre-COVID with the inclusion of, of um, uh, members that are attending virtually. So that's where we're at. Grace, do you want to add anything? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Grace. Um, I have been a member of Potential Place since January of 2018. Uh, Pre-COVID, I quite enjoyed uh, working in the marketing department, um, designing, and also working in the, our newsletter challenger, and um, hanging out with um, uh, everyone at the clubhouse, and also joining um, our Zoom meetings. And I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you, Grace and Frank. It is good to have you both, and thank you for that. How about let's uh, let's hear from Hero House, Kaylee and Kaylee and Monica. Tell us tell us what's going on with you guys. Ah. hi. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I am Kaylee. I am the CEO of Hero House Northwest. We're kind of unique because we actually have three clubhouses, uh, but today I'm here representing Bellevue Clubhouse with Monica. Um, I have been uh, with my clubhouse for eight years now. Um, it's just been a wonderful time. Uh, certainly unique right now during uh, this pandemic. Um, so much like everybody else, our colleagues on the panel today, um, we actually closed physically our clubhouse on March 17th, 2020, and we reopened June 1st, 2020. And in that time, we created a virtual clubhouse. Uh, so prior to COVID, our ADA was about 30. Um, and then since we reopened, we really haven't gone beyond about 50% capacity. Uh, we started pretty slow. We started with two staff and five members in the clubhouse um, and just kind of slowly started bringing people back. At one point, we were able to get up to about 15 colleagues in the clubhouse. Um, but unfortunately, since about four weeks ago, we've had to scale back down to, to seven total just because of the rise in numbers. Um, but and we have about between five to ten individuals on our virtual clubhouse every day, um, but we've definitely seen that shift. Um, so it, it's definitely been a difficult time, but I'm so glad to be here to be on this panel today to discuss that. All right, Monica, off to you. I'm Monica Swanson. I, I've been a member of Bellevue Clubhouse since 2009, when it was actually just called Hero House. I just recently got back into school and working, and it's, the, the clubhouse has just been great, great for me. 
<clears throat> Fantastic. We are grateful to have both of you. <clears throat> Let's hear from uh, Legacy Center in, in Michigan. We've got uh, Corey and Rhonda. And special thanks to, to Rhonda. We had a, a, a bit of a mix-up, and Rhonda has very generously and courageously agreed to uh, dive in today to help us with the panel. Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon. So I am Corey Walker. I'm from Legacy Center. I've been the director here since uh, 2013. Um, you know, one thing that's unique to us that impact this pandemic is we are in Flint, Michigan. So in 2014, we were hit by the Flint water crisis. And I'll just share one fact about that because that impacts, you know, how we've been planning related to COVID. Uh, when the Flint water crisis occurred, you know, just about all of us here were exposed to lead. Lead is absorbed into your bones and your body. So for us, this is a two-generation crisis. So that means when people reproduce or while they're pregnant, they're going to give lead to the next generation, you know, below them. So for us, that really changed, you know, how we plan, you know, crises, having something that's multiple generation, you know, impact our community. So we had closed our building in um, March 16th. Shortly after that, we started doing some virtual clubhouse services. Uh, we came back in August. We did a trial period with a group of members that were really you know, wanted to help us run it. We did some planning there. After that trial period, uh, we, we took a pause, which was good because we had some cases while we were closed. We came back and and we had an issue when we came back. We had a possible exposure in the clubhouse. So we said, okay, let's pause again. Uh, in September, we came back and we had the clubhouse running to we went to November 16th. But when we came back in September, we made it part of our plan that we were gonna run it hybrid. So every day we were half a day, but we were supporting the virtual clubhouse we figured two weeks before the holidays to two weeks after the holidays a lot of our folks wanted to travel a lot of people want to shelter with family for the holidays so why not do that and let's you know support our colleagues through a, a virtual holidays with their families Rhonda anything you want to share well I'm Rhonda and I've been a member of Legacy Center since 2009 I worked in the kitchen at that time and learned a whole lot. And I lost my train of thought. But anyway, I, I don't like this COVID thing. I don't like being, um, it, I was part of the group that started back to the Legacy Center and it was definitely different. It took some time getting used to it because I missed the um, the groups we had. So anyway, that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's fantastic. And actually, Rhonda, a great jumping off point for us to, to, to go forward. Because I think that this question seems to be, at least for me, one of the essential ones. Culturally and practically, uh, how does your clubhouse, does your clubhouse, Feel different than it did pre-COVID, and let's uh, let's let's start that with uh, um, I don't know. Let's let's start that with uh, potential place. In, in what ways does your clubhouse feel different now? Uh, thanks, Sandy. Well, certainly there's increased anxiety, uh, fear, and unfortunately um, decompensation, which has resulted in. Uh, more hospitalizations than uh, I know would otherwise have been the case. Um, and, you know, I think if we define culture as customs and, you know, the, the social institutions and the achievements of, of a particular sort of uh, society or even, a you know, um, uh, an intentional community like, like ours, uh, then there's no question that to a certain extent the culture has suffered. But, you know, the good news, I think, is, and we'll talk about how we've pivoted. I, I, I like to think of this as um, one chapter in a, in a book or, or one year in a life. Uh, it's temporary. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and you know, we've all pivoted in some fashion, I think, to a, a, a virtual or a hybrid world. Uh, but I think our core values and our commitments as clubhouses have not changed. We continue to offer safe space time, uh, advocacy, and empathy to our members. Grace? So we've definitely adopted. Um, we have, as a clubhouse, um, working with members, uh, colleagues, we've redefined what it means to feel 
and to be connected, to feel like we still belong and we're in this together. Um, we have, our our clubhouse, we have a strong culture of togetherness and being part of community, uh, to feel connected to one another that comes from colleagues, um, being in house, working side by side together, whether it's um, social rec or um, preparing meals together or putting hampers together or just in like um, doing data entry together uh, and having fun. So that moving into a virtual um, space, we've tried to have that, that sense of culture um, intact while navigating the fears and the anxieties and and um, navigating all that that those those feelings that come with uncertainty. Thanks, thanks, Grace. I, I, I so let's. I, I think what I'd like to do is is follow up on that. I know that at the church house we've worked really hard at doing outreach and trying to be creative about about doing some some more side by side work. But practically speaking, we're challenged by that. We we don't have enough. Uh, work side by side, and frankly, the idea of side by side at this point is kind of scary to 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 I, I think many of us. So let me let me ask uh, uh, Rhonda for for you. Um, uh, in what ways are you feeling engaged side by side, or is that is that not so much happening for you guys right now? No, it's it's happening. Um, we have virtual calls, and more and more members are. Um, joining the, the calls and then we have we have games like in virtual where we play bingo we do trivias and that's helped keep us engaged with each other excellent hey M monica what about what about you what, what what is there a different feeling for you well, for for me, it's 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 the virtual having the virtual has been has been helpful for me. I mean, it, I mean, I can't get in the clubhouse very often because I work. Actually, right now I'm not working, but I've been working, and and so getting in the clubhouse has been hard. So having virtual clubhouse has been helpful because I can come on, I I can go on, on my breaks and be able to let let people know how I'm doing and get get help if I need if I need to just talk about something. And it's been kind of nice having the having the time we play games and like like she, they they said Rhonda said I'm um, just playing just playing like crosswords and trivia it's been it's been kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, for 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 us too. Um, uh, Corey, you got your hand up there. Why don't you tell? <laughs> sure. And a member had made a good comment to me in private about this. Um, they said the whole idea of a clubhouse, a place you go for your hugs and your high fives, and some people live places where this is the only place in the world they go and they get that, and just not being able to do that. And I didn't realize it myself, but I found myself uh, last month, I was writing hand handwriting uh, holiday cards to all the members, and you know I mailed out 60 cards where I wrote individual message to everyone because I wanted them to have something tangible they could touch you know, as part of the clubhouse. Kaylee, what about you? Yeah, I think, you know, we are a resilient, I think, clubhouses in general. All of us as colleagues are resilient. Uh, but there is a struggle. I mean, I think we are naturally inclined to, to look at what's going really well. Um, but I think some of the struggles that we actually had um, in the beginning were the fact that we had to, we have one virtual clubhouse, and so, that idea of picking and choosing what staff you want to work with kind of went away because you have one or two staff on, and so um, and you don't get to pick what unit you're in. You're in the virtual clubhouse. So trying to find work that can be done in a group setting where you can't actually engage individuals in different work, I think that was a huge struggle for us and, and continues to be. Um, and I think also is wonderful. Like, I love seeing Monica pop on. Like, she's on her lunch break, and we're having lunch together, and I think that's such a wonderful thing. Um, but there's a lot of members, uh, and even staff, too, myself included, that struggled with the computer literacy component of it. And so that just totally changed uh, the way our culture was because it really kind of came into this 
how do we support each other instead of how are we engaging one another in work? And so I think that's definitely shifted for right now. Yeah, that's that's all great. <clears throat> I tell you, we we feel the same way. Um, here's here's my big challenge. My big challenge is we love well, right now a thing that we do every day is the New York Times crossword puzzle. We we do it on Zoom. We do it together. It's a bunch of fun. But here's what I think about. I think about nine nine months ago, if I walked into the clerical area and there were a whole bunch of members and staff sitting around a table doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. I would say, what the hell are you guys doing? We've got work to do. You are needed. You are needed not to play games and not to socialize and not 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 to do that thing. And I worry about uh, that that impact culturally. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that worries about it, but let me, uh, Grace, do, do you have a feeling about that? Yes. Um... With in, with in, with anxiety and um, and with the unknown and having the fear of the isolation, I think this this has been definitely a time for for me personally to make reaching out to my other clubhouse members um, even more important because. I know for me, and I'm going to speak for me personally. Um, one of my challenges has been with my um, um, with my mental illness is to to isolate and to kind of get bogged down with with um, what's going on with the news. Or I'm currently right now in school, um, taking full time classes. So seeing other members, especially um, during health and well, like our health and wellness um, meetings. Seeing other members um, finding out what is working for them and um, and with the other staff as well, um, that has definitely uh, helped me perk up and um, made me feel like I I, I belong, uh, but that I'm I'm in this together with other members, so that um, I'm not just on my own having to deal with this. So I think that that's really helped a lot with with that. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Grace. Hey, uh, Corey, are you feeling that sort of thing uh, that, that we're feeling here at the Carriage House as well? Yeah, yes, I agree. I mean, we're very much feeling that. That's part of the concern coming, you know, coming back. And then we're also worried about some of our folks that have built such normal habits. We're all kind of broken right now. I mean, I know it's the cause of the clubhouse come later than they used to. And, you know, we're, we're doing things we normally wouldn't do, even myself, you know, all my good habits. If I had to host a full day uh, holiday social event right now, I'd be exhausted, and normally that's pretty tiring. So you know that's kind of our concerns going back. It's like we're going to have to recondition ourselves. You know, just just the clubhouse, just to talk so much, just to being on our feet, and just smiling again all day. And totally, totally, and I I think as well. And I don't I don't know if everybody else feels this, but as we started to open for for us, I think honestly. Our staff, including me, had gotten pretty used to not having a ton of stuff and a ton of business and a ton of stuff happening all the time. Um, and and that, I think, um, maybe has changed uh, some of the expectations that, we're, that that it feels very, very different. Let me let me ask Kaylee, what, what about you guys? Yeah, definitely. I think that the whole notion of working from home in a clubhouse just doesn't fit. And I think that was really tough. I mean, the routine, like we talk about the work order day and routines and how they're important, but it's just as imperative for staff. And I find myself when I'm in the clubhouse, I'm I'm overwhelmed again because it's like, oh, I, I don't have to just rely on myself and the computer to do work. It's like, oh, my gosh, I need members to help but that whole engagement, you kind of have to recondition yourself, as you guys were saying, um, and it's overwhelming being in the clubhouse. And I think it's, it's so tough because we, when we reopened, we were so happy to be back together. And the whole not being able to give hugs, I think Corey was talking about that. That was so tough to be like, please stay away. And it just didn't feel right. But then it just got so overwhelming. And it still is because we have a limited amount of colleagues in the clubhouse but we still have to run the entire clubhouse. So 
you kind of had to break, we have to break it down and it, it feels overwhelming all the time. Um, and I think until we're at full capacity, um, are we not going to feel overwhelmed? Yeah, that's, 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 that's great. That's great. We're, we're going we're gonna to leave some time for questions uh, in, in about 20 minutes. But it, it feels to me like we all have identified this thing. This thing is we have become better at being there for each other. And we have not been as great as clubhouses have always been about the engagement thing. About, about the need and the meaning. I, I, I love the fact that the first question in our clubhouse is always, um, what's your name and do you know how to use Excel? Because we're screwed upstairs. I, I, I love that that's who we are. And we're not that right now. Um, so let me, uh, let me ask this question. What are we doing about it? So we've, we've identified that as an issue. What are we, what are we doing about it? And let's, let's start with Grace. Grace, what are you doing about it? Um, sorry, Andy, can you rephrase the question again? Oh, what are we doing? Sorry. <laughs> I totally can. It's my fault because I ramble. Here's the question. What are we doing to make sure that members in our clubhouses are feeling needed and wanted and expected rather than uh, just kind of taken care of right now? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for um, uh, rephrasing that question. Um, so in our clubhouse, um, engagement has definitely been key for us. So again, with um, to combat the isolation of the social distancing, we may be physically distancing, but we wanted to keep uh, the social aspect of it intact. So reach out for us has been he, we've had um, both members and staff working together from home at the beginning uh, to to reach out to members and not just a go beyond um, the the what's going on like with our weekly schedule that we were able to keep up with uh, virtually, but also having that conversation um, with me personally. Um, when I was talking to other um, members, would be, how are you, what's going on, and kind of delving deep down and um, getting, to, like, getting to really know them and being vulnerable with my own fears and then um, and hearing them out as well. Um, we have done a lot of um, uh, Slack as well. So for productivity, that was one of the, the key things that members were, were finding um, that uh, having that work order day, that structure was definitely missing for us at the beginning of the pandemic. So we worked with Slack and we also um, did a lot of the Zoom meetings. So every day we would have um, nine, nine o'clock in the morning and then one o'clock in the afternoon, we would have um, morning um, meetings, uh, clubhouse meetings. And then as well, we brought in a virtual um, over Google Docs, a, um, a virtual whiteboard so that everybody could see, okay, this person is doing this and this person is doing this. So we tried really hard to collaborate and work together to have that same feeling of productivity, of engagement, um, and have it almost mirror in, in, a, in a virtual setting. So um, members, uh, if they can make it to um, the, mor the morning meeting, they can still sign up and do like, oh, okay, I want to I wanna work on the, the menus today, or oh, I want to work on this. So, through this and as well, I saw personally for me, um, a lot of members kind of um, reaching out and saying, hey, I know I know how to work Excel, I know how to work um, Word, or I actually have a lot of experience with Zoom. Um, who needs help here? Who can, um, who can we, uh... so yeah, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of fun, and also a lot of people just working together and sharing like our uh, our our strengths. So through that, I think I've seen there's this switch from feeling oh I, I don't know what's going on like I maybe you know there's a lot of maybe to feeling empowered 
and feeling like, okay, I belong, I have a purpose to my day still, and I can keep going at it instead of getting stuck in our heads and, um, and kind of be, feeling defeated by that fear. That's fantastic. Thank, thank you, Grace. So what I heard you say, a couple of, a couple of points. One, schedules, keeping our normal clubhouse schedules. And two, um, the, using technology like the virtual whiteboard to make sure that people are involved in the work that, that can be done. Who else has some good advice for us at your clubhouses are trying? Yeah, go ahead, Corey. So one thing we also did with schedules is we, we mailed out our schedules for, you know, a six-week period, we, and we saw that kind of help because now people have something that's tangible they can look at, you know, it's printed up for them. But one thing we've been working on through this whole uh, pandemic is the idea of coming back and having a hybrid cooking show that could exist in our clubhouse and all the work we can create around that. So at uh, one point when we were back, what we did is uh, we got ingredients and we did cheeseburgers. So I delivered ingredients to six uh, member chefs at home, and we had a couple of staff that cooked, I cooked. We had a local business uh, cook with us as well. And uh, the business, uh, he talked to us about his restaurant, uh, some volunteer work he did. We told him about Clubhouse. He offered to pull other businesses in the call. So we got to have a pitch that we normally wouldn't get to have just by doing something that we thought was fun. But we really thought about the well, whole idea we could record these, uh, put them somewhere. We could have someone that's editing them and create a lot of work in our clubhouse just by adding something that we naturally like doing, but it'd be good work from you know, several areas of the clubhouse. And people could do it from home and not come in. That's that's great. And Corey, can can I ask just a, a follow up? Are are you able to do the video editing from home as well for members to be involved in? Yes, they'd have they have access to the software you know that we use as well. So that's we haven't great. record recorded any yet, but when we start recording, they'd be able to access it because we use uh, Wondershare. That's fantastic. All right, other other ideas for uh for, from our panelists here. Go ahead, Kaylee. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with our virtual clubhouse, uh, it actually allowed us to kind of take a look at all of the work that we currently do in the clubhouse and see what work is actually really important and does it make sense to be in the clubhouse. I think sometimes we get into this habit and we add, like, tasks that we think, oh, this will be good, but are they necessary? Um, and it was during the pandemic in the beginning, we actually started a brand new electronic record system. So we were trying to go from physical records to all kind of online. Um, and of course, that's really difficult, but it allowed us to actually do attendance and all of that, run reports for statistics and stuff virtually. Um, and I think that was really, really great. And then the way that we outreach people, uh, social media became a really big thing for us that I don't think we really participated in as much. We even created a private clubhouse group so all of us can interact. Um, Monica and I were on there all the time and just kind of making sure people are engaged. Um, but it's definitely been really unique to be able to make sure that Zoom has not just participating in what's happening in the clubhouse, but that they have their own set of things that need to get done each day. So doing the menu planning, making sure we, we call it our daily dish. And it's really just what's happening in the clubhouse. That's all done via Zoom. Um, so people can participate in that. And then it keeps the, the physical things um, in the clubhouse. And then as well as, you know, we have to, um, I think it kind of divides up that work. So it's not so, so overwhelming. Gosh, we got to get all these reports and we have to do this, this, and this, we can actually share it with our colleagues that aren't able to, to physically come into the clubhouse at this point. Bailey, Frank, what do you got? I, I would just uh, reiterate something Grace and you touched on, which is the sort of the electronic, um, uh, you know, sort of virtual task board. So we used to have three unit uh, meetings uh, simultaneously, three different task boards with daily, weekly, and monthly tasks, and we've automated all of that. And so folks that come physically get to sit in uh, in unit meetings both in the morning and the afternoon. So we have at least three Zoom meetings a day. 
and um, so, so uh, and the folks participating participating virtually get to do a number of the tasks that they want to volunteer for. So that's everything from um, you know helping set menus to doing uh, the birthdays. So we'll give a member who's at home the birthday list, and he can do all the birthday calls, invite people in for a free lunch, or have a free lunch delivered if they want. Uh, those kinds of things. And I think that's a really important takeaway that post pandemic we'll probably keep running with because it's it's it actually optimizes things and brings people. Uh, together uh, twice a day, uh, at least twice a day. We uh, we also have at least one other Zoom meeting per day, and and I think that's that's really important. Um, we have uh, still kept up with our employment program, our education po program. We provide education grants, so we've had uh, probably five or six new grants in the last uh, uh, couple of months. People wanting to take virtual piano lessons, to taking uh, cooking classes virtually, to uh, um, and to do creative writing courses and so on, and um, and and also you know our our, our membership, uh, uh, despite our, our lower numbers, we've added 32 members uh, virtually since COVID through virtual tours, virtual orientations, and the intakes can now be done over the phone or in person. So um, a lot of really cool. Um, takeaways that offset the lack of physical side-by-side -side connection um, that have enabled us to not only keep going uh, but thrive to the extent we have been and and I see that as a, a huge positive going forward for for all clubhouses um, so uh, that's my add-on I think Grace covered it well but I think those are really important pieces for us all to uh, to really think positively about I think that's fantastic. <laughs> Let me share um, a, 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 a hard story and a good story. So he, here's the hard story. So for Thanksgiving, of course, we decided that we weren't going to serve Thanksgiving dinner. It's our, it's our favorite holiday. We'd, we'd serve lots and lots of people. And we, we, of course, made the decision, well, we can't do it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to get some turkeys donated and we're going to make a whole bunch of food. We're just going to deliver it. We're going to deliver it to, to anybody that wants it. And we got done with that day where we had prepped all the food and put it in baskets and had all the routes and had all the drivers and did that and went home and thought this was this was the best clubhouse day that we have had in in nine months. And then uh, we had 19 people test positive for COVID. And uh, fortunately, everybody's okay, but it was it was brutal and it reinforced this thing to me that. What is a great clubhouse experience? Being together, being slammed, being pushed against it, surviving together and laughing and loud music and all that stuff is, is out of reach for, for us and out of reach for, for lots of us right, right now, I think. Um, so let me uh, ask then. Philosophically, the clubhouse, without having that sort of leaning forward kind of day, without having that, that, that thing that happens in all clubhouses where the phone's ringing and people are running around and the music's playing and there's, there's, it, we forgot to buy the lettuce and, oh, my gosh, the, the tire is flat on the van and all of that stuff. With, without having that and doing everything virtually, do we change the nature of our relationships, or are we are, are we are we okay? What do you think, Rhonda? I think we're okay. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I get nervous. Yeah, that's right. That no, 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 you're you're good. And I, I, as you've noticed, I ask long-winded questions that don't make any sense. Here's the question. Is the nature of our relationships that we built in Clubhouse working side by side different now when we're building them virtually? I don't think so because I know when I first started um, on the Zoom with Legacy Center, I was nervous. I didn't know how to get on or anything, but now other members are engaging at the same time on the Zoom call. And we're we're building a relationship there that I might not have engaged with some of these uh, members before, but now I'm engaging with them now on Zoom, and I'm I'm loving it. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, yeah, Corey, go ahead. 
Yeah, I'd say one thing that's been really cool in the Zoom calls is well, we run our meetings by PowerPoint. When we get to reach out, more to, more often than not, members are sharing who they've reached out to. You know, we do reach out. And a lot of people are saying, yeah, I've talked to two or three people since I've last been on the call. And so you hear you know, more of that than we heard when we were in the clubhouse. Thank you. So the the other thing that the Carriage House has thought about here, we're, we're, we're closed completely until January 4th. So we've been doing a lot of cool outreach and virtual stuff. But the, before we closed, a thing that we had to think about was what what our clubhouse is like when our average daily attendance is 25. Uh, we know what our clubhouse is like when our average daily attendance is 65, but it's different when our average daily attendance is 25. And the amount of work and the structure of the work needs to reflect our average daily attendance, not what we hope it is or not what we think it'll go back to, but what it is now. And I wonder if anybody else has had that kind of experience. Any of our panelists have that experience? Go ahead, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point because we really build the clubhouse based off of how many individuals are there, right? And so a lot of the time it's like, you know, we have things that have to get done, but it's impossible when you have 65 to 25 or you went from 30 to 7. I mean, that's a huge drastic thing. We know lunch has to be made. We know the phones need to be answered, and then we know that we we need to make sure that we're also doing all of our COVID stuff on top of it. So our, we've got to check people in. We've got to take their temperature. So there's added work that actually gets done. We've got to clean once an hour, every hour. So on top of, of scaling back, we also had to add work to it. And so I think what, what we did, and we did it in the beginning, and then when we kind of went back to a little bit more full capacity, um, we got rid of it, but we actually condensed our units, so we didn't have two separate units, um, and we just had one whiteboard, and it was kind of like the essentials. Like, what? Like we've got to feed the fish. They're live animals. We can't let that go. we got to make sure that they're fed. Um, and then we really kind of focused on what had to get done, and it felt, and it still feels like, gosh, there's things that we just haven't gotten to, and it's hard to go, gosh, we failed at that because we didn't get it done. But if it's not essential to the operation of the, the current clubhouse, then we have to be okay with letting that go for right now. Yeah, that was kind of our experience too, that, that we had to say, hey, you know, normally when we have a problem with engagement, it's because we don't have enough work. But right now our problem with engagement is we're, we're trying to do the work of 65 with 20 and that we don't have any accountability and responsibility and follow through on it. Anybody else have that? I, I would say, uh, Andy, that um, uh, underpinning, I think, your question is the fact that the resilience of our members, and quite frankly, our staff, too, is being tested. Um, you know, we, we are uh, in many ways being asked to do more. Um, despite the fact that there are less people um, attending, either physically or virtually or both, um, I think, um, you know, the focus has to be on doing the best we can for our members and ourselves, for that matter, as staff, uh, to face our fears, uh, to know that there's going to be a better tomorrow, that we are going to be rebuilding some things. And, you know, a lot of the positivity is focusing on what have we done well here, what have we pivoted to that will be instrumental to, you know, the carry forward piece. I, I think it's easy to focus, and, and members help us with this, right, uh, on, on the, the numbers, the spike in cases. But, you know, we know there's two vaccine, major vaccines coming out, and we'll we'll get through this. It won't be nearly as fast as we all want. I don't think we'll be out of 2020 fast as fast as we all want. But I think by, by spring or perhaps early summer, as long as we continue to remain vigilant and, and safe uh, with our protocols, we'll get through this together. And, and we'll get through it now. We're getting through it now, but with, you know, yes, with fewer numbers. But that just means I think we've got to step it up a little bit without burning out um, and help, helping members to deal with the, uh, you know, facing their fears. Um, we can lead by example as staff by, by doing that. And, you know, it's going to be a different Christmas, a different Hanukkah maybe, a different holiday, but uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, 
um, I, I, you know, I, I know the, the pillars of our, our side by side and, uh, work and engagement are really being tested. Uh, but, uh, I have no doubt we're going to get through this and it will be stronger for it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it's not so much plodding along as it is taking really, uh, digging down deep and, and working with members to, uh, you know, make sure they get out for walks. Uh, up here we'll be doing hopefully some snow shoveling, uh, snowshoeing and, and cross country skiing. People that want to come into clubhouse, we check in with them. Are you getting exercise? Are you getting out? Are you stopping paying attention to the ugly stats? Because there is this light. So uh, I, I think we have reason for optimism. We perhaps didn't have much in March or April or May, but I think we do now. And um, you know, I'm, 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 I continue to, to encourage all of our colleagues to work with each other, for each other, and, and that there is this light in the dark, and it's coming soon. Fantastic, Frank. I think that's a that's a perfect place to maybe jump jump off and see if we have any questions. I want to make sure that we we allow our uh, our, our participants to to jump in here. So I guess uh, uh, TJ, are you managing questions for me over there? Yes, I am. So for those who have a question that they would like to ask, please submit your question in the Q&A panel located in the bottom right-hand side of your screen or by pressing the three-dot option along the bottom and selecting the Q&A panel. Andy will be moderating, moderating our Q&A today. Our first question is, have your clubhouses lost any members to COVID? And if so, have you addressed it? How have you addressed it? What a great question. Um, let's, let's start with, uh, with Hero House. No, we actually haven't lost any uh, members to COVID specifically. Unfortunately, we've had um, a few individuals pass away from other um, from other issues, um, and I think it's made it harder for us to come together and grieve as a community. Um, but we actually haven't, you know, knock on wood, nobody has uh, passed away because of COVID um, within our community. Thanks. How about potential place, you guys? Uh, we have had um, a small handful of COVID uh, cases where members have tested positive, um, and and, uh, and so our, while our clubhouse uh, itself hasn't been affected, some of our, our apartment uh, tenant uh, issue, you know, clients have have been uh, tested positive, and and they knew the protocols, and and uh, so we haven't lost uh, um, anyone, any no one, no one's life has been lost. We have had a handful of cases. Um, that uh, that have been well managed um, and uh, sort of touch wood, you know, uh, we we hope that the numbers uh, uh, stay low as far as our clubhouse community. Uh, well, everywhere. I mean, but but uh, that's been our experience so far. Great, Corey, Rhonda, you guys, uh, you guys lose anybody to this pandemic? Uh, we haven't lost anyone this pandemic, but we've been fortunate too. The times we took pauses. People then came down with COVID like right right when we took the pause. So luckily, you know, the times when people have been impacted by it, the building hasn't been open. So it's been minimal, at least member to member spread. But yeah, we've only had a handful. Fortunately, they've all been uh, no one's passed away from it. Great, great. Um, the the carriage house we've had an, an unusually high number of COVID cases, but we do not have anybody. Uh, we haven't lost anybody yet. I'm doing a pretty good job of taking care of each other. TJ, what else we got? Our next question is, how has your funding changed during the pandemic? <laughs> that's, a, that's a fantastic question. Let's, uh, let, let's start with our, with our Canadian friends. They, their funding stream is, I think, a little different than the rest of us in the States here. Well, um, so our operating funding is normally funded half by our health services provider, uh, equivalent of the U.S. sort of uh, state funding from Medicaid or, 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 or other uh, public sources. Uh, we have rent revenue from our apartment buildings, uh, which is about 25% of our funding, and philanthropic giving is about the other 25%, and those are rough numbers. Uh, we have seen an incredible uh, level of support of, of COVID emergency funding of city funding, uh, provincial government funding, uh, federal government funding, uh, to the point that uh, I mean, I, I I don't say this out of hubris or or anything. I mean, our fundraising goal was probably a hundred and fifty thousand dollars this year, and we're we've raised close to five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we've been uh, wildly successful. Uh, 
uh, unfortunately, as a result, a large, a large portion of that is a result of COVID, but it's enabled us to open an addictions counseling program outside of our clubhouse, uh, but for our clubhouse members and those that have a dual diagnosis. So um, I'm, uh, I, I got to pinch myself basically every other day around the success that we've had and as a tribute to our staff uh, uh, and uh, the response that we've received in, uh, in, in Calgary and, and from the province and from the city. Fantastic. Be sure to tip your moderator. That's all I'm saying. Um, uh, well, what about what about Michigan? How are you guys doing funding wise? Uh, so we are auspicious by our local community mental health agency. We were very fortunate uh, funding wise. It didn't impact us. They saw how committed we were to our, the members and, and how much the clubhouse meant to them. So they kept our funding the same for, for us. Fortunately. Fantastic. And Washington. All right. Um, <laughs> so it's a little different for us because um, we have uh, Medicaid and county and city funding, uh, and it's based off of visits. And so that was really difficult. It's based off of hours and visits. And so obviously when we shut down, um, it was essentially no funding. Uh, luckily enough, our county figured out a way. Uh, you know, I think everybody was kind of in that boat. How could we bill for virtual clubhouse when we're not technically in the clubhouse? Um, but we also saw a huge increase in corporate sponsorships and, and funding because of COVID. So when one kind of dried up uh, because of visits, we actually miraculously had this whole other opportunity and this door to additional funding. I don't think we would have ever been able to access if it wasn't for COVID. Um, because when everything shut down, you kind of really got to see what were those essential services and clubhouse. Even when we had to physically shut down, we never one day closed. We were constantly open. We made sure people were engaged. And I think that story really rang true to a lot of our, our funders outside of the government funding. So that's definitely been a change for us. Um, and then of course, I don't know, we're freestanding, um, but man, that, that SBA PPP loan, the Payment Protection Program loan, very helpful in keeping um, everything afloat until funding was able to come in and, and get secured. Gotcha. Just for for our friends who are not not from the states, that's a, that's a program by our federal government to help support small businesses uh, during uh, the shutdown time. Thanks, everybody. Uh, uh, TJ, got another one. Yes, our next question is, can you give us some concrete examples of both work ordered day tasks and social activities members can participate in virtually? Ab ab absolutely. Let's, let's, let's do that and let's try to do it. I, I guess I just got a text saying we've got lots of questions coming in. So thank, thank you all for, for asking questions. And thank you panelists for being interesting. Um, let's, let's just try to do lists. Let's try to do a, a list of one uh, virtual work that you are sharing, and two virtual recreations that you are sharing, and uh, let's let's hear from uh, let's hear from Michigan first. Uh, our newsletter, uh, we're about people in that virtually, and uh, bingo is an activity that we love. We've learned how to do it virtually. Fantastic, uh, Washington. Monica, you want to take that one? Probably virtually, we've been doing a lot of uh, social call or calls for um, to members to see how they're doing and everything. And for social, we we've been doing some. We do we do a couple in house and some out out in the on virtual. We'll do games on virtual and in house. We've done uh, movies and and um, we did rock painting. Nice. Okay, uh, Canada. Um, so a lot of the things that, that we've been able to allocate through this virtual uh, work board that we talked about a few moments ago. So we do our, our newsletter um, uh, virtually, uh, our reach out. Uh, we, when I say virtually our newsletter, we, we actually get people to contribute to it and it gets put together at the clubhouse, but the pieces in the newsletter um, get submitted uh, from folks that are, that are joining us virtually. Reach out, our employment, education, and housing supports are also done uh, over the phone or on FaceTime. 
uh, or on Slack, as well as our advocacy outside of those three main domains of uh, employment, education, and housing. Uh, we do a morning minute, which is a cheesy broadcast that we love doing uh, that just talks about um, what's, on, what's on for lunch today, if you want to get a hamper order in, if you want to get a lunch order in, use our Potential Place app. Uh, we do that through our morning minute, as well as any announcements around changes to programming. We have a daily news um, uh, letter that we put together, and we have a weekly news broadcast, again, cheesy news, weather, and sports that we do, and that can be done uh, both virtually and, and physically. So our marketing communications team at uh, Central Place has just been fabulous um, uh, with getting members engaged with that, those activities. And then on the social rec side, we um, so from a virtual standpoint, we have games, we have entertainment nights. Uh, you know, we, we saw what happened down in California when 80 or so of us got invited to participate, um, uh, you know, at Tamara's clubhouse. And uh, we, we picked and borrowed and stole some of those things. So we have entertainment nights. We have game nights. Uh, we're now going to have to put those into a Friday afternoon because our social rec has been physically shut down as of last week until mid-January. But um, we, we have a fair bit of participation, uh, movies, uh, Netflix, that kind of stuff, too. Fantastic. Great. Favorite, favorite thing that you guys are doing, work and rec. What do you got? Um, so for me, it, for work, it definitely is the newsletter and being, so working virtually, being able to design posters and um, collaborate with articles and then also be able to collaborate on um, and give feedback on um, social rec events is really fun. And um, for wellness, um, with our health and wellness, that has really helped me a lot with, um, do, like, we've done meditation, we've done yoga uh, virtually and in the clubhouse, and also just, like, art therapy. Great. Rhonda, what about you? Give me the question again. Yeah, what's the, what's the favorite, what's, what's, what's going on at your clubhouse that you like to be involved in, either work or rec? Well, I like the rec. We're we're been closed for so many months that we've only been open a few t few times. But the cooking show that we have um, through Zoom is a lot of fun, and the interaction between the members and the staff is wonderful. There, we have a great staff at Legacy Center, and they work really hard. They've been working really hard to keep this clubhouse together. Fantastic. Thank you, Rhonda. I am acutely aware of the time that the people moderating this thing, uh, uh, they, they don't like us to go over. So I, I want to I just say, say this in, in closing to, uh, to all of us. I was talking to my, my, our board of directors over here at the Carriage House, and they said, listen, 2020 is uh, – we get a pass. 2020 was a was a really hard year, and uh, it's totally new. It's totally different. There is nothing in the history of the clubhouse model to date that compares to this. And so, when we're when we're thinking about uh, what this is, we are patching it. We're we're making a patch because it's going to be done soon and we're going to be back together soon and we're going to be hugging soon and we're going to have our vibrant, busy culture uh, uh, zaniness that happens in, in every clubhouse soon. And uh, we are remarkable. We are remarkable as communities. We are remarkable as members. We are remarkable as staff. We are remarkable as supporters. Um, I am grateful to our panelists for being interesting and creative and sharing their experiences. I am grateful to all of our participants for joining us. I am grateful to my clubhouse and to Clubhouse International for allowing this to, to, to take place today. Uh, on behalf of all of us in this, uh, in this panel, thank you participants for, for joining us. It, it means the world to us and uh, thank you to everybody so much for being here. Oh, I think that, um, uh, Robbie might have something about uh, what's going on at the next webinar. Is that right, Robbie? Um, thanks, Andy. No, 
we we don't have a date or you know the actual information about the next one, but we'll send it out to everybody as soon as we do. Thank you guys. You did a brilliant job. If we Thank have you any everybody. Question, please send an email to the WANA webinar at fountainhouse.org. The recording will be made available next week. There will be a survey on screen once the event ends. Please take a moment to fill it out and give us your feedback. Thank you for coming to the webinar. Please be on the lookout for announcements regarding our future webinar. Thank you so much for helping us moderate this, TJ. And thanks again, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy holidays to all.